Good evening from Topolinik in the Vistula Valley in the north of Poland. I've been asked to read to you by Roz Scanlon from a book of mine called I Could Read the Sky. This is a book about an old Irishman born in the west of Ireland who migrated to England and who near the end of his life is lying in his small flat in Kentish town in North London remembering all that he lost, all that he gained, all his sorrows, his joys, his dances, his music. Novels, in my experience, uh, arrive in ways that are different from things that arrive in other aspects of life, usually from a place where I'm not looking unexpectedly, but in such a compelling way that I've been willing to spend some years trying to under, unravel why they're so compelling. This was different. It began when I was shown some photographs taken in Ireland over a period of 20 years by the very renowned English photographer Steve Pike. They were pictures of fields, houses, stones, fairgrounds, people, close-ups, distant shots, people working, sometimes also in England. And the idea was that I would write some sort of a text to go along with them. Uh, these were images that were, their black and whiteness seemed to be more suggestive than realized, something evanescent about them, something fleeting, something going away from you, a bit like memory uh, as you're trying to capture it. And I thought this book could somehow be about memory, as Ireland too is full of so much remembering remembering of massacres and migrations and euphorias and many other things that are commemorated in marches and in statues and in dances and other such things. And um, so I also began to think that emigration is one of the things that generates memory, perhaps most of all. People remember where they're from, the people who have been left, remember the person who has left. Memory can be glorious, memory can be painful. Sometimes it's most painful when it's most glorious. So I had been living in a very Irish London for a long time and met a lot of people who had migrated from the west of Ireland. And I, I knew quite a bit about their lives, but I didn't know enough so in order to write about this experience, I went looking for them. And I mostly looked for them in the Irish centers of London, also the bars, but I went to the Roger Casement Center in Archway and the Irish Center in Camden. And um, so in a way, that's where I got the stories from this book, and um, in a way it's appropriate that this book comes back to an Irish center because that's kind of where it started its journey of discovery. So um, I thought, given that it's for the Irish Cultural Center, I'd read a couple of sections about music. On the day we killed the pig, Joe Connor sings the rocks of Bonn while Ma fries the grishkins and pig's liver in butter. The bottle of whiskey is half empty. In Joe's voice, there is more than one sound. There's a deep drone, like from the pipes, and above it, pure, sweet notes. You never know until he sings them where they'll come from. A stone dropped in a well, rocks forming in the earth. How does Joe know so much about the hurt of this man with land that cannot be plowed? I have a sound on the accordion I know is mine, but that I cannot yet reach. It seems red and gold and full of light. It's fast and sure. We eat the meat from the pig. I think of his trotters pawing at the air like he's trying to run as the blood pumps out of the wound I made into the basin. When we finish, Matt orders more music. Da plays a tune on the flute, then me on the accordion. Then Matt calls on me to play the moving cloud. I have some whiskey in me. There's something about the way Matt is tapping his foot and cocking his head, the way he draws the music into him this night. He's like a man with a plate of stew after a long day in the fields. When I hit the first notes, 
My hands take off like a pair of birds. I can feel the tune spilling itself out inside me. I can see all the notes like they're small colored stones you'd find on the strand. I can look at all sides of them and find the right place for them to go. I could go to the well and back between each of them. Ma sits down by the fire. Mary leaves down the plate she was washing. Breege comes in from the yard. I've never been in this place before, but I know all about it. Da is watching my hands. I could keep them flying for a month, but I finish the tune, and I put the accordion down onto the floor. The kitchen seems to ring as though the tune is leaving slowly. Then it's quiet. You've never played like that before, says Matt, and maybe you never will again. Da goes to the table and pours out a whiskey for himself and for me, then hands the bottle to Joe Connor. He brings me the glass. He looks like he's just had another child. You've passed me out now, he said. It was time for you. It was the day of the All-Ireland, and bets were being laid and pints were flying. I left the accordion in the digs, but a lad from Kerry gave me the loan of his, and I played them the Golden Castle. We bought bottles of stout over the bar and made for Alexandra Palace with our radios. Francie, Martin, myself, and another cousin of theirs, a pale little fellow called Ivan, who was never before out of his own parish. When we got to Alexandra Palace, the crest of the hill was crowded with Irishmen tuning their radios to get the signal from home. We drank the stout and listened to the wild calls from the hillside as the points were scored, and afterwards, with the sun still pouring down on us, we played 25s. That was the day of the All-Ireland, and I won four pounds at the cards. Did you know they have a statue here of Oliver Cromwell, said Francie? I saw it myself. We were making for Kilburn on the top of a bus. Ivan had a handkerchief in his hand made into a pouch with a length of red string. He untied it and held it out to me, a smile on him that showed all his teeth. Earth from Donegal, he said. He wanted to be a priest, said Martin. That was meant to explain it. But he doesn't drink enough, said Francie, and we all laughed, even Ivan. We had plates of boiled bacon and then made for the old bell. We had pints in the old bell and pints in the volunteer and pints in the black lion. That was the day of the All-Ireland and the day I had luck with me, for it was the first time I ever saw Maggie Doyle. She had a dress on the color of sand and red shoes, and she was walking across the room like a cloud was carrying her, leaning a little forward, the red hair falling across her left eye, her face set, the mouth open a little, then the smile breaking first in the lines around her mouth and then up into her eyes, and her whole face was alight when she sat next to a woman wearing a broad straw hat. I remember not only the way she looked when she came into the bar, but the way it felt the moment before. The smoke rising from the cigarettes, the young boy selling papers, the Sligo man in the grey suit with his fiddle case across his knees and his finger tapping at the side of his brow. Francie imploring Ivan to take a short. Then Maggie. And as I remember it, everything around her blurs. I think she looks over at me once from her chair, but maybe not. I have the accordion with me, and when I play Come West Along the Road, the horse McGurk gets up, takes off his shirt and vest, and dances around the tables with a chair between his teeth. I think of the way the lines break around her mouth when she starts to smile, the alertness of the brain behind it. That was fine playing, she says to me as she goes. She is looking over her shoulder as she walks away. The day of the All-Ireland. What I could do, I could mend nets, thatch a roof, build stairs, make a basket from reeds, splint the leg of a cow, cut turf, build a wall, go three rounds with Joe in the ring Da put up in the barn. I could dance sets, read the sky, make a barrel for mackerel, mend roads, make a boat, stuff a saddle, put a wheel on a cart, strike a deal, make a field, work the swarth turner, the float, and the thresher. 
I could read the sea, shoot straight, make a shoe, shear sheep, remember poems, set potatoes, plow and harrow, read the wind, ten bees, bind wines, make a coffin, take a drink. I could frighten you with stories. I knew the song to sing to a cow when milking. I could play 27 tunes on my accordion. What I couldn't do. Eat a meal lacking potatoes. Trust banks. Wear a watch. Ask a woman to go for a walk. Work with drains or with objects smaller than a nail. Drive a motor car. Eat tomatoes. Remember the roots of buses. Wear a collar in comfort. Win at cards. Acknowledge the queen. Abide loud voices. Perform the manners of greeting and leaving. Save money. Take pleasure in work carried out in a factory. Drink coffee. Look into a wound. Follow cricket. Understand the speech of a man from West Kerry. Wear shoes or boots made from rubber. Best PJ in an argument. Speak with men wearing collars. Stay afloat in water. Understand their jokes. Face the dentist. Kill a Sunday. Stop remembering.